Welcome to the Shock Your Potential podcast, where we focus on creating positive, productive, and profitable workplaces. I am your host, Michael Sherlock. I am a leadership and sales expert, best known for being serious about business, despite what you may think by my appearance of often very colorful hair and sometimes crazy shoes. My guests bring a wealth of information that will support your career and your business, along with many pearls of wisdom to support balance in your personal and professional lives. Listen in as I have another amazing conversation with a guest who will certainly shock your potential. So Nathan Perez, besides being a genuine and hardworking introvert, is also an award-winning author, a national speaker, and an executive and job search career coach at Career Innovation. And what is he so good about? He's so good about networking, which is why I think it's great that we're talking about him being a hardwired introvert. Now, he's come from unusually unique and diverse professional backgrounds himself, and he has a kind of a rare viewpoint on networking, also how that relates to job search and career development, and we know that they are all tied together. He's a formerly trained actor. He has a 20-year career in the arts, supported by simultaneously developing a business career, which is always good. We need to have that balance. He was responsible for the first step of the executive recruitment process, where he devised strategies of where and how to find the best and most qualified candidates for all national and global search engagements for his organization. So in other words, he finds the people that need to be found to put in the positions where they want to stay and make a a company better. So joining me today to help us navigate this is Nathan Perez. Nathan, thank you so much for joining us. Hi, Michael. Thanks very much for having me on the show. I'm looking forward to our discussion. Me too. And I love it. I love you saying, hey, I'm a hardwired introvert, but we're going to (laughs) talk about networking. Oh, and by the way, I think perhaps you also may have a book uh, somehow that uh, that is going to be helpful to us as well. But I just hit the highlights of your bio. Tell us in your own words a little bit about you and what you do and how you help your clients to shock their potential. You hit a lot of the information, I think, right there, but I'm going to kind of touch on some of these things to kind of lead into our discussion, uh, right? Anyway. So I'm a professional speaker uh, and executive career coach. I've been doing that for about eight years. Uh, and prior to that, I was in the retained executive search industry. This is what you had mentioned. Um, mm-hmm. I'm a little different in that industry, though, because, uh, you know, a lot of people have heard of executive recruiters. Sometimes they're called a headhunter. Um, Mm -hmm. But I I wasn't one of those. I was the first step, as you said, the first step of the whole process. So I found the executive candidates for the uh, executive recruiters to go and recruit. Um, Mm -hmm. So as we kind of tie this into networking, you can imagine how networking uh, was a major function of my of my overall job. Um, Prior to that, though, uh, again, as you had mentioned, I I spent 20 years in the entertainment industry as a professional actor and writer. Uh, And then uh, so, again, if you just think about the entertainment industry, if you've ever heard from somebody, you know, it's it's all about who, you know. And then in 2012, uh, the last firm that I had joined, I met who is my co-author for the 20 minute networking meeting. That's that book that you had mentioned, uh, which Mm -hmm. eventually turned into three more editions Um, and and a combination of her experience in the retained executive search industry uh, and then uh, my experience in the retained executive search industry combined with the entertainment industry. Networking was a topic that she had brought up as a bucket list idea for a book, and and, uh, we jumped all over it. So fast Mm -hmm. forward to now, um, this leads up to all the professional speaking and the workshops I do. I give around 70 webinars uh, and workshops per year uh, around the country, Uh, and it is all mostly, most of it, I would say, is geared around networking. And not just networking for like job search, but networking for anything, right? Mm -hmm. Sales, business development, marketing, whatever it may be. I love it. And, you know, networking is, I think people like either love the concept and they love to network or they're a little afraid of it. But yeah. what I always say is, you know, we're networking every day. You know, you have a business meeting, you have a, a client call, you, you know, you say hello to somebody in a coffee shop. We're networking all the time that we may not do it proactively, or we might not do it consciously, but we have so much opportunity around us. What you do with those, with those um, either short meetings and, and, you know, introductions or, you know, much more intense ones can make it or break it for you in your career or your business. Absolutely. Networking, I mean, is central to, to just about everything. I just don't think we necessarily think about what we're doing 
as networking. And, and I also, mm -hmm. I, I kind of think that over the course of time, what's happened is uh, the word networking has gained sort of this negative connotation because of mm -hmm. behaviors that have been associated with it over time, right? So a lot of people think that networking is about, you know, being all slick and smooth <laughs> and, you know, name <laughs> dropping or being salesy and those kinds of things. And so people don't think about networking in terms of just discussion. But the truth yeah. is, and this is, um, this is part of maybe what I'll talk about in, in a bit, but the truth is, it's just, it's just the obtainment of information and the exchange. And when we exchange information, right, it's still about obtainment of information. That's all that it is. So to your point, we're doing it every single day. Every discussion that we ever have, we're, 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 we're exchanging information and obtaining information. Yeah. And I, you're absolutely right. I think that many people have been turned off by somebody at a networking event, you know, that corners you and make sure, you know, they, yeah. they give you their sales pitch. Some people are really terrible at it. Other people are very good at it. Other people are terrible in a different way where they don't ever ask for, you know, any leading questions or learn anything. So, you know, there's an art to it. Yeah, absolutely. Well, you know, I think what happens is people sort of, um, they lose track of what they're really there for. And and mm -hmm. the feeling is, I need to give this person all of this information so they understand what it is I want to talk to them about. But the trouble mm -hmm. is, is that it's information heavy. It's all mm -hmm. at once. And, and when it's a lot of information all at once, it's also very difficult to keep track. And there comes a point, you know, usually the person sitting across from you wants to listen. They're there with you. They're there with you. But there, there comes this threshold, right? Where now I can't keep track of all this, and people tend to 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 tune out. So I think the art part of it is simply, you know, structuring things out and and making sure that that person is also engaged and involved in in your meeting. <laughs> Let me ask you kind of a leading question because I was asked this question the other day on a podcast I was a guest on, and yeah. I don't know if you'll agree with my answer or not. But the question was, do you believe people should have an elevator pitch? What's your answer to that? Elevator pitch can sound like a certain thing, okay? So there's that. Mm -hmm. But the answer is yeah. But the uh, but but the thing is, it's the word pitch, right? Yeah. Let's just say this is for job search. Maybe maybe you're going to network and you meet somebody for job search. Are you really going to pitch them, right? If this is a sales thing and you're in an elevator, the reason they call it an elevator pitch, this comes from the acting world, is that you might have a, a minute or two stuck in an elevator with a casting director, and so you'd pitch mm -hmm. them. But the right. truth is that it becomes salesy. Now, what it really is with this elevator pitch, also known as a snapshot, right, or mm -hmm. uh, a commercial or all these different things is a succinct description of your professional mm -hmm. background as mm -hmm. it relates to the person you're talking to. Now, you can have mm -hmm. something general for someone that you don't know anything about. But if you're being intentional about your networking, you've hopefully done research on someone and you talk about your background in a way that's relevant to that person you're speaking to. So the short answer is yes. The longer answer is don't necessarily look at something as a pitch so much as something that's about your background. Or if this is for sales or business development, it might be a bit about your company or your product. Right. But you aren't necessarily trying to sell someone. Right. Right. I think that's really great because when somebody asked me this, I said, honestly, my answer is no. And the reason I'm going to say no is that people tend to memorize this pitch yes. as something that they say, if I say it out loud this way and I have it memorized, people will go, oh, my God, that's fantastic. Here's money. I need what you're selling. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> right. Doesn't really work that way. And anybody who's listened, who's been in that position, uh, you know, they would agree. And I love how you say it's a really succinct description of your professional background or your business, you know, mission or whatever, but that it's relevant and important to that person, which means that you, you know, it, it's not always, it's not one size fits all. It's not one element, one sentence that's going to, to be equivalent and important to everyone. So you have to be very aware and adaptable. Absolutely. It makes a really big difference to the people who are who you're talking to. Right. So if we're talking mm -hmm. about, say, marketing operations, but you're talking to someone who's not in the marketing world at all, a lot of this stuff could be lost on them. And here you, you know, you're repeating this memorized thing that you've done. But if you already understand ahead of time that person is not in marketing uh, and you can understand where they're coming from, then you can say the same stuff 
right, in a mm-hmm. different language, different terminology, just in a way that that person understands. That is your yeah. overall point in sharing any of that information is that you're giving them something to be able to relate to and you're doing it in a way that they can understand. If not, it goes over people's heads and then they kind of look at you like, oh, that's cool. <laughs> Okay, I got to go back and get some more of those bacon wrapped shrimp. <laughs> right, right. This is, this is this is my floor. I got to get off here. <laughs> exactly. You know, it reminds me. I was I was interviewing someone several months ago, and uh, I I don't know how we got on this, but I he said something about you know elevator pitch, and I said, well, what is yours? And he said, well, I kind of found this by accident. He said, but you know, one day I was at a meeting, and I wasn't a meeting where he was speaking at, but. You know, he was there to listen or something, some conference and somebody asked him, so what do you do? And he said, well, and he goes, and I knew who the guy was and I knew that he could possibly hire me to speak. And he said, so I told him I motivate salespeople and in a way that makes you the total hero. I just get to deliver the message. And the guy's like, what? How do you do that? (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> I'm like, that's awesome. I'm going to totally steal that next time I'm at <laughs> that opportunity. <Right. laughs> that's fantastic. I hope it worked out for him. Yeah, no, he said that guy was like, really? Let me go get my boss. Hey, this guy's going to help me- motivate our sales force and I'm going to look like a hero. I'm like, oh, right, right. <laughs> What's in it for me? Hero, hero exactly. status. Exactly. <laughs> I have a feeling you might be able to teach us just a little bit about upping our networking game. Is that what you're going to teach us this week? That's what I'm going to do. If it's not teaching, at least it's going to open your mind to a different way of looking at stuff. Love it. Ready, go. (laughs) Here we go. So, okay, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to, I'm going to do this in two steps. Uh, I'm going to clarify and simplify networking. And then I'm gonna talk about exactly how to hold such a meeting, okay? And by uh, defining it, well, I should say, redefining network. Um, Mm -hmm. And when it comes to actually running a meeting, um, by the way, anything I'm about to tell you, this can be used virtually, this can be in person, this can be over the phone. There's nothing that gets in the way of it. Um, And there are five steps to it, okay? And this is based on the 20 minute networking meeting. The first step is just a great first impression of you. And by the way, this is all going to sound very familiar because we're doing this stuff all the time, just without necessarily like this practice or this process. So a great first impression of you in the meeting. This could be over the phone or virtual, but basically it's just a hello, you know, just a little bit of talk um, as you get into thing. And maybe you're going to set your agenda. The next step is a 30 to 60 second snapshot of your background. And we Mm -hmm. had just touched on this, right? It's a snapshot of your background or your professional experience. If it's for sales or business development or marketing, maybe it's a bit about your products. Maybe it's a bit about your company. But the idea is that you are giving context for the great discussion step, which is Uh the next one, okay? So that's step step number two. Now, step number three is the great discussion. This is the bulk of your meeting. This is about 12 to 15 minutes long. That's it. By Mm -hmm. the way, each one of these steps, they're, they're all written with little time limits. And the bulk of your meeting here, 12 to 15 minutes long. And it's um, comprised of five key questions. Uh, I'll first talk about the first three and then we'll hit four and five. The first three are very specifically formulated for your contact. From mm-hmm. the research that you've done with your on your contact beforehand. Why would you mm-hmm. be doing that? Why is it specific to those contacts? You are hoping sort of for sort sort of for the um, uh, the specific or unique wisdom or knowledge that perhaps only that person could give you. Now you mm-hmm. can ask the same question of multiple people from multiple perspectives on a single thing that is important to you. But we got to remember when we network with people, it's like a shortcut, right? right. If you are trying to learn about anything that is going to be about your business or sales or even your job search, right? You, you're, you're trying to formulate questions that are going to kind of lay out that path for you. Um, Mm -hmm. Question number four is about expanding your network. All right. Uh This is about asking for more names. And there are lots of people out there who are like, Oh gosh, I don't want to ask. This is so uncomfortable. And people don't want to give names. And, but the truth is, is that people really do want to help. And this is also Mm -hmm. Uh, a major goal of yours in your overall networking is expanding your networking. Ah, that's where I was going to go. Networking with people is a shortcut. 
Um, yeah. So you can read all these different things. You can read blog posts and you can listen to podcasts and so forth. But what we're kind of doing is piecemealing together an overall meaning right for ourselves. But when you meet with people individually, it's it's a shortcut because they can answer your specific questions specifically. Yeah. All right. So, okay, so fourth question, asking about names because people want to help. Uh, and because they said yes to your meeting, more often than not, people will give up those names. OK, yes. so that's question number four. Question number five. And this is a big one. So if question number four is what throws us as a networker, I don't want to ask this question. Question number five is what kind of takes your contact by surprise, but in mm -hmm. the best possible way. That question is, how can I help you? Mm -hmm. We cannot yes underestimate the power of this question and why this right. is so important, especially in a networking meeting is that it makes your networking now reciprocal. This isn't right. just all about you. This yes. is a game changer thing, especially in this crazy world that we're in right now with all this stuff that's going on. It's kind of led to this sense of distrust. And we're all on the same page right now too, right? The entire planet right now is feeling the same sort of stuff. What's going to happen very shortly after, after things start to iron out a little bit, the way that we talk to and the way that we listen to one another is, going, is evolving. It's already evolving. And a question mm -hmm. like this, how we listen, how we talk to each other, how we help one another is going to be key. And that's question number five. Yep. Then step number four. Okay, so that was step number three with the question. Right. Step number four is wrapping up the meeting. That's right. it. No long goodbyes. And then step number five is following up afterward. Yep. You got yep. immediate follow up and you got ongoing follow up. Ongoing follow up is about keeping your network alive over the course of time. Yes. And that's it. And I said, like I said a little earlier, it sounds familiar, right? We do all this stuff all the time, but maybe just in this process. Yeah. And it's one of the things that I have a couple of people on my team who are responsible for sales functions. And so we've been talking a lot lately about when you have an interaction with someone, and they're not ready for the close, but you're having a good relationship. You're having great interactions. That's when you, when you're all done, you know, you've gotten off the Zoom call, that you just take a moment and say, "Hmm, what's the next best step for me to make with Nathan?" Is that you know, send him a link to an article about something that we just talked about that he'll he's interested in. Is that you know, send him a thank you note. Is that hey, I'm going to follow him up with in ten days because I know he'll be back from vacation. You know, all of those things are are important. Right. But if you just take that breath right after and say, what's the next best thing that I can do, and when's the most appropriate time for me to do it based on what I know. And then right. schedule it on your calendar. Put it on your Asana yeah. task list. Say, I'm going to call Nathan in 10 days and say, how was Barbados? <laughs> yeah. That's it. As simple as that. As simple as that. And here's a tip, right? If you can keep things relevant, you'll always keep that last discussion alive over the course of time. It'll, you kind of keep yeah. yourself up to date with things. So, and because and, people always ask me, how do I follow up? What do I include? Well, you can just start with where you left off. You know, I remember exactly. that you were going to go on a vacation. How was that vacation? Hey, I know you're working on this big project. How is that going? And now right. you're you're right there on the same timeline. Every little piece of information that we exchange eventually kind of adds up into a big pile. And that yep. big pile can be reserved for a continued discussion with that person or that bigger pile could be informing other little piles that inform other discussions with other people. There is, yeah. it's just all about what you do with that info. And there's never bad yeah. info. It's just what you do with it. Absolutely. I love it. Well, um, I, you're, you have such a great, um, you know, information here is some really good points that I think I know people will take away because, you know, networking is not going to go away. It's very important. And just in case somebody wants to look you up right now, what's the best way for them to find you? Yeah, if you want to find me, you can find me at my website, NathanAPerez.com. If you're looking for the books, you can find them on Amazon, on iTunes. There's an audio book that's also on my website. Uh, and you can also find me on LinkedIn. Uh, I post a lot of stuff over there. Um, yeah, you can, yep, that's it. <laughs> Excellent. We'll have links to all your books in the show notes as well. So guys, make sure you check in there. And before we go, Nathan, what are your last words of wisdom or pearls of advice for my listeners and viewers? Mm -hmm. 
networking is just the obtainment and exchange of information. And we're doing it all the time. If you can look at it this way, then every single discussion that you are having is actually networking, right? So a case in point, if I were to say, hey, good morning, Michael, how's your morning been? And you say, Nathan, I spilled my coffee or <laughs> my dog stepped in front of me or whatever else. That's still information and exchange. And I might talk to you the next morning and we might pick up from there. How's your ankle? Is your ankle better mm -hmm. after tripping over the dog, right? We are doing it all the time. And if you just do something with the information, you will actually carve out a path for you wherever you want to go. I love it. Just do something with it. <laughs> I'm writing just that down. <laughs> do something with the info, all right? <laughs> I love it. Nathan, thank you so much for being my guest. It has been an absolute pleasure having you today. Oh, my pleasure as well. Thanks for having me, Michael. Thank you for joining us on another episode of the Shock Your Potential podcast. And as always, don't forget to subscribe, rate, and like us today.